you know, with the recent windstorm that we've had up in the Santa Cruz Mountains and actually down in the valley, we've experienced a lot of failures. And I'm always trying to figure out why a tree falls down. Sometimes it's just, you know, I, I can't figure it out. But in this case, this is a failure that happened to a friend of mine, a neighbor up in the Santa Cruz Mountains. He had a giant fir fall down. And I was truly amazed at the size of this root ball. It was massive. I thought to myself, why would such a root ball tip over like this? Were the winds just that strong? We'll get back to this failure in a minute here, but this kind of poses a question for me. You know, when you have a big tree fall down, a lot of times you can go in there and look at it and say, aha, that's why it fell down. It was related to construction impact or, you know, the, the trenching caused the roots to be decayed or, or maybe insects moved in. But when there is an unknown factor, a lot of times people will ask me, is my tree safe? Now, look behind me here. This is where I live. I've got these giant firs all the way around me. And there's my house. I've got giant oak trees. Look at these big oak trees up here. I'm constantly looking at the trees on my own property and trying to predict and say, is my tree safe? And in many cases, I really don't know. Now, getting back to this particular tree that failed on my friend's house, had somebody gone up there and recognized that there was a small intersection, maybe a confluence of little waterways that came down as a result of redirected past construction, even though it was 40, 50 years ago, over time with the road and the compaction and the redirects, the water that flowed maybe been, had been redirected and flowed right through that trunk. Now, had somebody seen that and recognized that that was an area of weakness, maybe that tree could have been removed prior to this happening. I don't know, you know, but this is uh, something that we deal with as arborists. People are always asking me, is my tree safe? And much of the time, I just don't know. Or was it associated with all that water? And I spent some time looking at the local area around this tree. And I don't show you here, but up above this property are two adjacent properties, as well as a road that seems to have transformed the environment. There, that gives you a little better perspective. I was trying to stand there to show you how big this, st this stump is. I mean, this is the size of a small room. I could not believe that this tree went over, but thoroughly saturated soil combined with those strong gusts of wind blew this massive big fir down. This, this tree was uh, well over 100 feet and it was an ancient old tree, and sadly, it hit my friend's house. Fortunately, it was just the last portion of the tree that hit the house, and you know the trunk did snap, but it did cause considerable damage to their home, and they've had to move out. I was looking at this, trying to figure out how would I get this off of the roof without causing more damage, and I realized, well, the damage is done, so I guess a little bit more damage isn't gonna be such a big deal. Um, but boy, you know, it left a considerable hole in the house. There we can see that the tree smacked it pretty darn good. Sadly, up in the Santa Cruz Mountains in Boulder Creek, there was a fatality. This is a redwood tree that went down. I don't know if it was thoroughly saturated soil, but I believe it must have been. You know, so many big fir trees go down that it makes a lot of people just completely afraid of the giant firs. And here's one that I cannot explain. This tree just snapped like a toothpick. So here I am safely in my own house. I'm looking up at my ceiling thinking, how strong is that? <laughs> I don't think it's strong enough. But should we live in fear? That's the question here. Should we be afraid of our trees? I mean, I made a conscious choice to live in the forest. I love my woods.
I do recognize that there is risk. And one thing I want to say is you can probably minimize your risk through careful observation. Pay attention to your trees. Look for symptoms. Look for signs. Look for cracks in the soil. Look for flows of water that may be weakening the root system. Pay attention to the trees around you. Go for walks. You know, walk all the way around the base of the tree and see what you can observe. Look for cracked limbs. Look for things that may lead to a problem. I mean, I'm constantly driving around looking at trees off in the woods and trees along the roadways and thinking, oh, that one's going to fail. That one over there looks like, about, oh, look at that limb. That's going to break and take out the power lines. And I know that the power company is constantly sending arborists around doing exactly that. They're trying to predict what's going to happen based upon observation, knowledge, and really it's paying attention. So get out there, take a good look at your trees. Thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed, please do so. You know, hit the like button there and add a comment. I, I do pay attention to the comments. As you know, I answer as many as I possibly can. So tell me what you think.